Hi, it's Lee Kapansky here. Now today I want to talk to you about pitching. Now the only chipping and pitching action we tend to hear about is the classic weight on the left leg, lean the shaft forward and keep the hands ahead through impact. Now this gets the ball jumping and running onto the green, like this. Now that's a great shot to have, but how often do we get to use it? Now if you've got a scruffy lie or you've got to land the ball on the putting surface and stop the ball quickly, you've got to get the ball up into the air. Now when you see a tour player nip it off a tight lie over a bunker to a tight pin position under extreme pressure, they're using the bottom of the club. Now the bounce is your safety mechanism. Now I'm always trying to get my students to be athletic and react naturally. So if you were to imagine that you're on a beach somewhere beautiful with a stick and a stone and you wanted to hit that stone, how would you do it? So here I am on the beach. With a stick and a stone. Now if I wanted to move this stone in this direction here, I certainly wouldn't want to lean my hands forward and do this kind of thing because it's an artificial movement and it wouldn't work. Now, if I wanted to try and lean back on it and try and scoop the stone into the air, that wouldn't work either. So what I would do is I would put my body into a nice neutral, natural position so my feet would come quite close together. Body weight would be evenly distributed on both feet. Now when I stand to the stone, the movement that comes out actually comes out from the wrist. So I'm releasing my wrist through the movement here. Now this is perfect if you want to play a pitch shot because what it does is it activates the bounce here and the bounce is your safety mechanism. So now as you can see I'm back on the golf course and what I want you to take from the beach is to feel something that is not necessarily golf but an athletic or natural movement. So if I was going to try and hit this ball here one-handed with the grip end of the club as you can see, it's a very wristy movement. Now, if I was just to turn the club around and I did the same thing, just let the club head swing on the end of the grip and you just move the club head versus the handle, then you get a much more of a sense of a, an athletic or natural movement like this here. Now, the benefit of this is you're returning the, the, club, the club shaft back to length at impact. Now this is instead of the, the common mistake of somebody who is carrying the handle away this way in the backswing here. Now when they get over here, they make a jerky movement back here, which creates too much angle. And it makes it very, very difficult to time and very, very difficult to get good contact. Now the energy should be in the club head. Now just before we get started, the difference between a chip and a pitch shot is that the leading edge here works on a chip shot. Now the ball's back, the shaft is forward, and the leading edge here hits the ground first, and the ball jumps up off the face like this. Now that's a great shot to have, but everybody that already plays golf can do that because that's pretty much all we hear about. Now pitch is different. It's where the bottom of the club or the bounce is engaged, and the difference being when you get the shaft to be released, here at impact, instead of leaning forward like this here, the bounce will react with the ground and the club head will glide under and past the ball and the ball will go up into the air. Like this. Now, that's what the tour player does all day long and that's what the low single figure handicapper does, but I'd like to see the 25 or 35 handicapper being taught how to pitch the ball properly because I think that's the way you're gonna lower your handicap and not by striving to knock it 20 meters further off the tee. Just 20 meters further. 20, just 20 meters. How hard can it be? Come on. Oh God, oh God, no, 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 no. Get down, get down, get down, get down. Oh God. Oh, it's not only this bad. Oh, why me? Yeah, it's gone out, yeah, it's out. Can I have another one, please? Thank you. Do you know that guy? I hope it's not you. Now, to activate the bounce, the club face has to be slightly open. 
You'll see there's more of a bulge now here on the, on the club, club face. Now, if the club face is square or closed, the chances are the club head will dig into the ground and turn over, closing the face. Actually, closing the face takes the bounce off it. Now, the bounce is the bulge here at the back of the wedge. Now, this is what reacts with the ground and bounces the club through the surface under the ball through impact. Now, the bounce angle is how much lower the trailing edge of the sole is in relation to the leading edge here. Now, bounce angles range anywhere from 4 to 16 degrees, and it might surprise you that your 3-iron, your 4-iron, your 6-iron has bounce, because the bounce is designed to stop the leading edge from digging into the ground too much, helping the club head to glide through. Now, it's a science in itself, and that's why getting fitted for your wedges is a really important part of the short game process, because you'll feel how the club head reacts with the turf through impact, and you'll find out which grind, which is basically the shape of the head, and how it interacts with the turf, and how much bounce suits your game. Now, a typical 9-iron has 9 degrees of bounce, so it always surprises me when someone shows up with their new shiny wedge with 4 degrees of bounce. I mean, that's like a knife. The bounce is your safety net, and if you use it correctly, you can be way out and still hit a great shot. So now at the setup position to truly activate the bounce, you'll have to open the club face slightly, okay? Don't worry about the ball shooting off to the right side when you do this. A slight opening of the club face will have near to no effect on the direction. Obviously, if you splay it wide open, then the ball's gonna shoot over to the right side, so don't do that. Now, don't fall into the trap of gripping the golf club first and then opening the club face, because when you do this, your body will always try and find its natural position at impact, and your hands and arms will turn and rotate back into the natural neutral position, which either squares the club face up or closes it slightly. You could even hit the ball then, then left, and the, the club head will dig into the ground. Now, firstly, open the club face, and then take your grip, okay? Now, the shaft should be pretty much straight up and down, up and down at a 90 degree angle like this here. I don't want to see any shaft lean because that just de-lofts the club face and takes the bounce off the club head. Now, as far as the stance goes, I always get nervous when I see somebody who's standing like this on a short shot because you just know that the body's going to move all over the place like this. I would much prefer to see somebody stood completely close together because rather than wide apart because as soon as you do this, the upper body is nice and quiet. So take a nice narrow stance. You can have it slightly open if you want to. I generally tend to stand pretty much square on. Too much open is also a problem, so just stand slightly open if you're going to stand open. Okay, now the body weight should be neutral on both feet, and your body should run up in one line. I don't want you to go back onto your right side, because when you do this and you release the club head, then you're going to hit the ground too early. Also, likewise, if you put too much weight on the left side here, and you're trying to use the bounce and release the club shaft to impact, you're going to uh, dig into the ground, deal off the club, okay, and you're going to take the, the bounce off the club head. Now, the ball position should be just inside of the left heel, so five centimeters inside of the left heel, like this here, okay, in a nice neutral standard position. Now, as we move into the swing, if I was to ask most of my new pupils, do you release the club too early or too late, the majority of them would say too early, but I would disagree, because the reason being that most golfers dip. So when they release the club here, like this, they dip onto the right side and release the hit into the ground too early. So it looks like this, here, okay? So it's vital that your body stays in a neutral position and you turn through with the shot, okay? Now I wanna make sure the club head is swinging and not the handle end. And you wanna be, let the, let the club have some freedom with my wrist and naturally, then naturally turn through, through impact. The danger is, is always that you stay behind and then you knock it into the ground. Now the key to pitching is to return the shaft back to length, a 90 degree angle at impact. So when you come back to impact, you wanna be in the same position you were at the setup position here, the same position then at impact. So you're releasing the club shaft back to a 90 degree angle. Now, what happens then is the bounce will be engaged. I mean, you can also over-release if you want to. All that, all that happens then is you increase the amount of bounce, okay, under here, and also you get a higher ball flight. So you actually want to be hitting the ground first with like a drop kick kind of feeling as the bounce reacts with the ground and the club slides under the ball. The aim is to get the bottom of the, of the club here, the sole, to tap on the ground first. 
and let the bounce do its job. The leading edge here digs and the bounce slides. So when you're playing these shots, your hands and arms should be nice and relaxed and you should feel the weight of the club head here in your hands. Fairly light grip pressure. Now let your hands and wrists work freely and your body should turn back and through in a nice neutral position. Don't dip or don't put any weight onto your left side. Now, you want to play the ground first and not the ball. Now this works great and you're actually looking at a point on the ground two or three centimeters behind the ball and through impact until the ball has gone and then turn up and through the shot. Now the bounce will react with the ground and will glide under the ball. So if I show you one from this angle here, So I'm looking at points here behind the ball, and this is the point I want to hit. You see the club head has glided under the, under the ball. Same again. And releasing it through impact. If we give you a target view shot, see it's here, you're going back through the shot. Nice high ball flight. You're hitting the ground first, you'll hear the ground. You'll hear the ground first. And what's happened is the bounce is doing its job. Now, if I try and completely mess one up, I'm trying to hit too far behind, you'll see from this angle here, the bounce should rescue me. I mean, that was a great shot, actually. The bounce slid underneath the ball. I'll do the same again. I'll really try and duff this one. I'll try and hit the ground first, way behind the ball, and see what happens. Once again, the bounce came to my rescue. Now, if you want to knock shots off your game or you want to stop sweating every time that you're faced with a pitch shot, then you want to start using the bounce. Now, stand straight up and down in one line. Okay, a nice neutral position. Open the club face first and then take your grip, okay? Now, the secret is you want to return the shaft back to a 90 degree angle and you're releasing the club head actually at the ball this way, okay? So, I mean, I don't understand why anybody doesn't want to use the bounce. This is the way the club has been designed and club has been made. It makes the whole thing much easier. You can stand there, use the bounce, hit the ground first, check. Look at that, brilliant. Same again, nice and easy, you hit the ground first and the ball just goes into the air. Oh, nearly into the hole. Now, it increases your hitting area also because if you use the leading edge like this, what happens is you, you've got to hit perfectly to the ball or perfectly to the ground. Okay, as soon as you use the bounce, what happens is your hitting area really increases. So you're going from this to this, okay? So I hope you've enjoyed my lesson. If you have, then please hit the subscribe button below and give me a thumbs up. I've got loads of great information on the way. I'll see you next time. Cheers, my friend. That's it. Looking good.
It's football coming home. Not this time, is it? Coming home. Hey. No, it's not. Come on. Is let's it? Let's go. Let's go. Let's no, go. No, it's go. not. Home. Yes, go. That's it.